Steak and shake. Steak and shake. It took me 18 minutes to drive to this place. That's what's left to them. This is what we're trying to determine. From what I've read online on the ingredients list, these sauces should last for a couple of decades. And here is the much lauded, the fabled, oh, you know, see what horrific. Look at all that sauce. Oh God, it's soggy. Oh well. We can do better than that. Much better than that. And in my opinion, a really good burger starts with a really nice house-made sauce. This is how you make house-made Frisco sauce. It starts with this stuff, tamarind, gives it a lovely savory and sweet and sour, unique taste that you can't get anywhere else. Link is in the description. You just use two to one ratio of boiling water to tamarind. Set that aside for 10 minutes. While that is steeping, you can saute off your vegetables. Half a shallot, two cloves of garlic, and some little cherry tomatoes. We're gonna saute these off till we get a nice caramelization on them. And a sprinkle of salt will help to draw those sugars out. Deglaze with balsamic vinegar. And add the sugar. Add the water and simmer for five minutes on low heat and strain the tamarind. Now we have this lovely sweet and sour concoction straight from Southeast Asia. Link in the description, baby boo. A little squirt of lemon for added acidity. Now it's time to blend it. I use a deli tub and an immersion blender. Blitz it up, but not all the way, in my opinion. A nice little bit of texture is just what this kind of sauce is crying out for. Either put it in the fridge or let it cool to room temperature. I cooled mine off in the fridge and then added the mayonnaise, the tomato paste, and the molasses. And now I'm gonna add my little pickle to it. Chop these as fine or as coarse as you like. I like mine to be quite fine. A dash of turmeric, a dash of sweet smoked paprika, a wee sprinkle of salt, and finish with our sweet and sour tamarind juice and give it the patented cheesy bread test. And it was perfect. If you don't want to find tamarind, Worcestershire sauce is a decent substitute, but it is the last ingredient on the list. So you'll be adding all the other stuff as well. I like to think of it like this. You cannot make tamarind with Worcestershire sauce, but you can make Worcestershire sauce with tamarind. Here is another by no means comprehensive list of the things that you can make with tamarind. Smash burgers are all about maximizing Maillard reaction and minimizing juice loss. Here are some essential tips to do just that. Essential tip number one, choose good beef and grind it yourself. Incidentally, always freeze your grinder parts. This will prevent the fat from smearing into the meat. Alternatively, you can get your butcher to grind a choice cut for you, but doing either of the above will ensure you know what it is and how safe it is. Tip number two, salt last minute. This will improve the texture of the meat. And tip number three, finally, always smash that burger within 30 seconds of it hitting the hot pan. This will ensure that the beef retains maximum juiciness whilst also obtaining that lovely brown golden Maillard reaction that introduces all those extra volatile compounds. Just like in a Frisco melt, I used Swiss cheese, but I substituted the American cheese for Colby cheese. Genius decision, in my honest opinion. And then it's just a case of chucking it in 
the pan betwixt my buttered sourdough artisan bread and the rest is future history this thing was beautiful you will get to hear my final thoughts on it after the money shots I highly recommend this here tool for your burger smashing adventures. It only costs about $12. It's made out of solid cast iron and it's solid and heavy. But the best part about it is that it's not just for smashing burgers. You can also make perfect bacon. You can make yourself panini sandwiches. And overall, you can just look pretty cool being the owner of one of these things. Link in the description. That's it right there. That is it, isn't it? So I was thinking while I was making it, why would you go through the hassle of making all that sauce from scratch? And the reason is, is because it's f***ing delicious. It tastes similar to a Frisco melt sauce, but... Mm. It has so much more like savory and piquancy. Piquancy? I can't never say that right. I think I nailed it. And one thing I learned was you don't need a bloody cast iron pan to make these burgers. You saw how the Maillard I was able to get out of the non-stick pan. Why not use that? Buy it. three of them for $60 and they look nice as well. That's my opinion comes up to heat just as quickly and if you're using a consistent enough heat source who cares if it keeps its heat or not mm. and the Colby cheese also is far far superior to the American cheese that you find on a normal first come out then you've got the top quality thick cut sourdough the sauce that you can just tell is how homemade and you've got a recipe for never ordering anything from Steak and Shake ever again. Plus, you can keep this for a bloody long time. This stuff, with all the sugar and vinegar in it, it's gonna keep. That's how good it is. Bet you can't eat a spoonful of Frisco sauce like that. See you next time. <laughs>